everybody, it's Jago here with the Shot Clock Podcast. This week I'm sitting down with Cork native, Neptune underage star, MVP of the men's Division One Cup weekend, UUJ's Conor O'Sullivan. Welcome to the podcast. Jago, thanks for having me, man. No problem. Look, we had a great time together over the weekend of the Dublin Classic. I got to know you pretty well over that weekend after spending all those hours together. And to see you bring home the golden ball um, and bring the cup north for the very first time, I just had to have you on. I, I enjoy having MVPs on the show, so <laughs> who, who better to have on? Um, how's things been since the final? I'm sure uh, the parties up in, in Ulster were pretty spectacular. Yeah, listen, obviously brilliant to bring it back up for everybody up here. Uh, first taste of silver, I know that we're after getting, so we're only hoping that we can push on from here and Clinch the league as well as the cup, so it's probably going to come down to you and Talca again for the league, is it? Uh, it's looking like it at the moment. Well, the two Limerick teams are, are doing very well as well. They got Talca knocked Limerick Eagles out of the cup in the first round. Um, I don't know where Limerick Celtics were in the cup, but they're both top of their conferences as well. So they're pretty, they're pretty good teams. Like, yeah, look, it was a great weekend. Fantastic to watch. Um. A lot of happy things for me getting to see uh, Igor back on the on the court as well after his uh, yeah. crucial ligament injury. Unreal. I'm playing so well as well; it was unreal. unreal. Um, yeah. Yourself getting the MVP, and it was a fantastic advertisement for basketball. I yeah. thought Talca did really well as well. Michael yeah. Bonaparte's about 107 years old; like he played against me. He's scary. <laughs> Boney, Boney's scary. Like um, one thing about Boney is you just can't can't get him mad. So I was like, to the lads, I, I made that mistake last year myself. I was like, I started talking mess to Boney in a game when we were up 20. And he turned around to me and he goes, they're going to regret this now when we come back and win. Luckily, we we still won, but we only won by two. Oh. So yeah, I made sure to tell the lads, I was like, lads, whatever you do, just don't piss them off. Keep them on our side. Because if, if, he gets, if he gets an eye, then it's a different game completely. Like, Absolutely. Absolutely. Super, super player. Look, we're going to go back. We'll come back and we'll talk about the, our time with the uh, Dublin Classic. We'll talk about Inspire Sports, Sports Changes Life, the fact that you're a victory scholar as well, and we'll tie all that in. But right now, let's go back to the very first time you picked up a ball. Who, what, or why inspired you to hoop? Uh, I think that's pretty... <laughs> everyone, knows, yeah, everyone knows the answer to this. Um, my dad was pretty good back in the day. It was all right, like, uh, so I, I've had a basketball on my hand since I'm, what, three years old, three, four years old, or since I could walk. <laughs> but um, not many people know that my mom, my mom was actually pretty good too, in fairness to her. Really? Yeah. She was tough with the stuff for her. Um, she was all, like, she'll always tell people, she's like, no, nah, Tom didn't do anything, it was all me. <laughs> I give my mom the credit when where, where it's due. <laughs> yeah, my dad was good, but my mom was better, I think. Love it. How many leagues and cups has your dad won? I don't know. Um Jesus. I, I know I know that he's uh, he's the most decorated player in the country. I know that. Like of all yeah. time. So I think he might have five or six cups, maybe. I think he's seven or eight leagues and four four top fours or something like that, something along those lines. Unbelievable. I as far as I can remember, I had the pleasure of playing against him in my debut game. Really? So, yeah, yeah. Fair play. Bright Saunders. Um, with Notre Dame. With Notre Dame. Back in the day, my first game, Super League, was away to Neptune oh, in the stadium. And as far as I can remember, your dad was playing. But I know Terry Strickland was definitely playing because I got to guard him. Yeah, and it's still one playing. of the greatest moments of my life Yeah, to, to get to play on the court with, with Strickland. Yeah, I then made the mistake of going to the bar afterwards and was standing in the company of some, you know, mm -hmm. females. We go, yeah. we go as far as that. That I said to him, man, I remember watching you when I was a kid. <laughs> Didn't go down very well. <laughs> <laughs> what year was that? Uh, was... Oh, Jesus. Uh, what age was I? I was 16, 15, 16. So that's what, 30 years ago? Ah, yeah, he's probably playing then. He, play, he stopped playing around when I was born, so thirty years. Yeah, then, yeah, he would have been. He would have been on the floor back then. Yeah, Mark yeah. Ingle was coaching us at the time. Mark didn't travel to that game. Uh, Darren McGuinness, myself, Jenks, 
Bride coached that game, but I'll never forget it. I'm like, it's it's one of the. I know you you, you never forget your first game, but like, uh-huh. Terry Strickland was an idol. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was the coolest man on the planet. Like, he's nailed to a lot of people. I think everybody, a lot of people looked up to him. Yeah, unbelievable. Own fellow as well, really nice guy. Like, really good guy. Really, yeah. really good guy. You, so you grew up around all these legends. Grew up, grew up around them all. Um, Jim Nugent would be a guy that I would I would look up to a lot. Brendan, my dad's best friend. A lot of them. Joe Heafy coached me where he, his sons obviously played with me the whole way up. Yeah. You know, Joe Healy, Paul Healy, I can go on. I can go on forever, <laughs> like. Um, but obviously, back even when I was growing up, there wasn't many DVD players were coming out then, do you know? So it was, it was still VHS or... Yeah, yeah VHS, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's what, that's what they were. We were watching them on the tapes, myself and Dara. But then my dad got a present one day. All his games were converted from VHS to uh, DVDs. Unreal. So we, we like literally nearly every single one. So myself and Dara used to spend countless hours just watching them games, like. And Unreal. that's when the stadium was rocking. Absolutely rocking, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like obviously, Kieran Shannon's book hanging from the rafters. Yeah, it really was like that down there between the parochial and and the stadium. You yeah. could not move in that place. Yeah. And the heat mm-hmm. and the noise and what I loved was that the fans are so close to the court down there. Yeah. That you hear everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was a scary, it was an intimidating place to go and play. I wouldn't say no, it's getting to that uh, today, but I mean, it's looking quite close to it. The Neptune Demons games that I watched this year, the place is absolutely packed, yeah. you know? And what Neptune are doing them. with their whole show. Yeah, unbelievable. The smoke there. machine with the, the lights, everything, you know? And I'm probably signing Jordan Blount to that three-year contract as well. Like, that's a massive statement for, for the club. A player of Jordan's caliber, anybody in the country would be happy to have him there, you know? Absolutely. And it's always going to be big news. Where, where he could have picked he could have picked anywhere in the whole country and it would have been big news to go for that he was going there, you know? So, so you mentioned there that you grew you grew up playing with the Heafies. Your yeah. underage team was stacked. Yeah, we were unbelievable. So from yeah. memory, there was you, yeah, Adam Drummond. Me, Drummond, Dara. Jenks, the two Heafies, uh, Liam Chandler, God rest him. Um, who else is there? I don't want to miss anybody. Daniel Maguire, he's he's not playing anymore, but geez, we were good. We had some serious talent. Unbelievable. And uh, the Hannigans too, sorry, the Hannigans. That's actually there. Yeah, the Hannigan brothers were both there. The Hannigans yeah. were there, yeah. So, I mean, the amount of talent. Jordan Blount wasn't there. He was He's a bit older than you. Jordan's only a year older than me, but he was gone and all. I think yeah. he was in Spain or something at, at that stage. But he was a few years, he was a year older than me. He wouldn't have been on those teams. But geez, <laughs> looking looking back at it, no, like it's actually it's kind of scary. And then you had my dad and Jar Heafy coaching us. So the amount of knowledge that the two of them had is they've uh, they've forgotten more basketball than most people learn in their lives. Yeah. And so, and that's the truth. Like, you know, they grew up in I know Paul Kelleher is going to have a go with me on this, and I'm sure as soon as I release this episode, I'll get a text message. But I still think the 90s were the golden age of Irish basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Late 80s, early 90s for me is still the golden age. Yeah. You know where Paul, the peak, from? Anyway. Paul now says, you know, obviously the Irish players now are much better, mm. you know, stronger, more intelligent. The coaching is getting better. Yeah. But just if you're going to go asses on seats. <laughs> oh, yeah. If they're going based off that, then it definitely is. <laughs> It definitely is, but I do. I might have to agree with Paul on this one. That I think the skill set of Irish players has gone, gone through the roof. Absolutely, you know. Absolutely, it really has. Um, I think some of the Americans that were there back in that time were probably better than some we had here. But looking at looking at the ones that are coming in lately, they're they're coming in at a great standard. Like this kid, that guy MJ Randolph for Demons that they brought in. I haven't seen a guy like him in a long time. No, he's good. But even uh, John Jean for UCD, yeah, yeah, got done in the field with uh, with Vincent's another the kid the guy for Jared, player. Jared for NUIG, yeah, J- oh, Jared yeah. Haynes from yeah, Mary, yeah, 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 and then obviously I have Josh in, Josh, yeah. you know, and Josh then, seems like Josh seems like a, an Irish person at this stage. 
Really yeah, that's, look, if, if you've listened to the, the episode mm-hmm. I did him, he, he reminds me so much of the old school Americans. Yeah. The guys that married here and stayed and never went home, you know, that you yeah. still see knocking around, you know, if you're walking yeah. through Balanade, the auras coming out of Tesco's, you're going, Jesus Christ, you know, like he's still yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing. Like, <laughs> unreal. It's unreal. Look, we mentioned some of your, you know, underage teammates that you played with. And then obviously now up at UUJ, your time in the States. Who's been your favorite teammate and why? Uh, there's going to be some people that are going to be hurt at this one. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm sure that they'll they'll understand. But obviously, I played with my brother, and it's always great to play with my brother. Um, it's great to play with my best friends growing up. But if I'm going solely off like someone that would always have my back, or that I can count on no matter what to give me, doesn't even have to score, you know, ten rebounds and guard the other team's best player. I'm going with Shane O'Connor. He's our captain this year. Yeah, and he would absolutely he'd run through the wall for you. And that's that's all you can ask him. He he's been overlooked now a lot as well throughout his whole basketball career. But he would he would bend over backwards for any, for anybody on our team just in order to win, you know? Yeah. So I'd yeah. probably go with Shane. Look, it's a fair shout. And you yeah. know, bring bringing that silverware back up north, he was a huge part of that game. Oh, massive. Yeah. A huge part of the whole season yeah he was I thought his best game of the year was definitely it was the semi-final we beat Malahide down in Cork um people people have been voting against us for the majority of the year but they were like oh Malahide will take care of him in Cork um Trevor their American is really good like and Shane kept him below average I think he only had what 16 or something so that's he that's well. Twenty-four game or something. He's about, I say he's close to twenty-six to be yeah. honest. But I think he had about sixteen or eighteen. Which if you keep him below twenty, you're winning. You know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, Shane, yeah. D- decent player, very very yeah. good player. Decent is yeah. probably an understatement. But yeah. yeah, it's strange. A lot of players get overlooked through their career. You know what I mean? It's yeah. And you look at their numbers mm-hmm. then when 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 all is said and done, and you're like, how did he not yeah. go on to do more? You it's know? not even his, it's not even his numbers, and he'll tell you that himself. It's just why he does that. The stuff that he does that doesn't show on the stat sheets, and that's I mean, that's every coach's dream really to have a player like that that will do all the dirty work, and that's exactly what Shane does. It's hard to coach that. Like like I'm involved with a couple of kids teams, and and coaching them that there's no point coming off the floor and saying, oh, I, I ten points today. Yeah. But you'd not you'd know hustle points, you'd know, you know, you'd know blocks, you'd know charge. No, nobody takes a charge anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're going, they're the things that win you games. Yeah. And yeah, you know, kids are looking at you going, yeah, but like I didn't score. It's it's not all yeah. you can't have everybody scoring 20 points. No. Can't. Somebody no needs practice. to be somebody needs to be the Dennis Rodman. Somebody yeah. Needs to go and get rebounds. Kids take charges. You know their role. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Look. I, I love players like that. I love a hustle player. Yeah. I love somebody who comes off the floor and you go, geez, he didn't do much. And then you look at the stat sheet and you go, oh, maybe, maybe he yeah. did. <laughs> <laughs> so look, over the years, toughest person to guard and who has guarded you the toughest? It's probably going to be your brother, is it? <laughs> we had some rough one-on-ones out the, out the front. Goodness, like, I am probably, it's like there's nobody who knows my game better than Dara. Uh, Growing up, my mom even used to have to stay out and referee our games, like because we end up in fisty cuffs, you know. But toughest person I had to guard, probably in college, and I didn't guard him an awful lot. But it's a guy named uh, Dimitri Chambers. Uh, he played in Oglethorpe, the fastest guy I've ever I've ever seen, right? And he can he shoot from anywhere. So if he walks across half court, he'll and his quickest release lefty, but he's probably Longest arms ever. His hands were down to his knees, like just standing. He's a really long point guard, but he can score at all three levels. Not many people, obviously, over here would know him. But yeah, he's probably the hardest person I've had to guard. Scary, scary good. Anybody who can just cross that halfway line and launch, you're oh, in trouble. Oh, yeah, you're in trouble. Yeah. But to get. Who plays, who, who days you up the toughest now? Had a, t- had a few tough ones this year. I'm not going to lie. Um, seen a few box and ones, but the, probably the toughest one to guard me this year. Connor Liston did a great job in the final, I thought. Um, they switched between Connor and Marcus, and 
I, I feel like that they they both did a great job. They, they did a great job. Didn't stop you hitting. What was it? Thirty. Nine like twenty one in the final. Twenty one in the final. Yeah, yeah. So it, they did they did a good job. So credits where credits due. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Marcus Black's Marcus Black's a problem when he's gardening. He's an iron. <laughs> he's an absolutely. iron. And I know Marcus since I'm a kid now as well. You know, I know Marcus since I'm eight, ten years old. We grew up together too. Yeah. And obviously know each other's games. So he has long arms, but he's he's just the he's just the best on defense. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, hate hate little guards like that. Yeah, very nice. Hate little guards like that. Who's who's the guard now down in? Um, oh, jeez, who would, who would I have gotten the semi final? Um, Ballin Colic. Ballin Colic. They're yeah. little, they're little Spanish. Oh, Pau, Pau, yeah, Pau. Oh yeah. man, yeah, he's. I watched that game and I was like, I would have slapped him by now. <laughs> <laughs> Just like no. <laughs> I could yeah. not deal with that. That under your arm defense. Yeah. I was like, oh god, just leave me alone. Yeah. Just annoying, just in your in your jersey the whole game. So Reminds me of Emma cool. Donnelly. Same that yeah. in and around your body that you're just like, just just get out of my space. <laughs> get out of my space. <laughs> Let me try and do something here. <laughs> but yeah, I, I look, I lo- I'd love to have him on my team. Yeah. Hit I'd the hate to play against him. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. So look, basketball. Notoriously superstitious sport, you know. We have our pre-game routines and our post-game routines, and I'll only wear that jersey or put my right sock on first. Any superstitions that we need to know about? I I generally don't. Um, I just try and relax. Like I try, I listen to music. Obviously, same as nearly everybody. I don't have any certain songs I listen to. Whatever, I just click shuffle. But I don't like. I just. I'll watch the game before if they're if they're playing, but I don't have any like I have to do this before the game. I have to do this or else I won't play good. I just kind of listen to music and just try and relax as best I can. Go with the flow. Yeah. So look, we'll we'll take a break on our on our questions and we'll go back to the Dublin Classic where we got to got to work together. Yeah. Tell us about your time with Inspire Sports and Sports Changes Life and your time as a Victory Scholar you know, what you do, and then obviously the, the opportunities that it's afforded you, and then just that Dublin Classic for me was possibly the best weekend the basketball I've ever been involved in. Yeah, it's unbelievable what they're doing, Jordan. It is like, I mean, it's not very often you have college basketball of that level in Ireland, and people that went realised it, I thought, you know, and people, people were kind of like, nah, I won't bother but then the people that went were like, oh my God, when is the next one? Yeah. You no, know, you, you got the same. Absolutely, um, yeah. yeah. What, Garrett, what Garrett and Deirdre and Mark and all of them are doing for the game of basketball in Ireland, I think, I think it's great. You know, you're trying to promote the game as best you can. And what better way to do it than to bring the best possible level over to Ireland where people can see it firsthand. Absolutely. You know? So and, and you're talking like as a victory scholar, what like what does your day look like? What what do you do like on a daily basis? Are you working out in the community? Are you uh it depends? No. So obviously I, like my, my coaching schedule hasn't come out yet for this year, but like I'll go work for Sports Engine's Life and I'll do coaching probably about two, three times a week. So I'll go out and work in schools that some schools that I've I've been in before, but it's obviously different classes. And it's good that they get a different voice. Even if it's a cork price, they don't. <laughs> they, they might not understand me the best of times, but it's it's different for them, you know. They some of them don't even know where cork is, you know. And some, of them, some of them are like, "Oh, are you a young offender? Are you this?" And, <laughs> and like, I just play along, like I'm just like, "Yeah, I am." <laughs> so, you forget that 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 program like travels so well. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it did. I'm working yeah. with Garrett McGuire. Garrett, like, I'm a complete fanboy when it comes to Garrett. Like, he is one he of my is, biggest yeah. heroes. I absolutely, I love him. I, I adore the man. Yeah. Dears are the same. Actually, belated happy birthday. Day. Um, <laughs> get that out there. Um, but, like, to work with Garrett on a weekly or daily basis, how is that? Like, I can only imagine what that feels like. I just, he's great. He's just, he, he he's a character. Like, he, he really is. Um, and... You only you only have to meet him once for to know that you know, but working with him, 
he, I, the man has everything going through his head. He has a lot on his plate, you know, especially when it comes around event time, it's understandable. Um, so whenever it comes to it, like, you know, I have to ask G a question or something, I just ask Deirdre. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just ask Deirdre, I'm like, Deirdre, is, is G here or is G doing that? So she has it all. So I'll, I'll just ask her after a while. But he, he knows what he's doing and he's doing a good job at it. So fair play. What, what, I, love about, what, what I love about G is no matter how busy he is, no matter what's going on, if a kid comes over to talk to him, yeah. He's straight in there. Oh, 100%. He's never too busy. Yeah. He's never too aloof. Yeah. It's just straight in and the famous. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. And, and off he goes. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? And it's infectious. Yeah. And that's, what really about, though. that's what they're all about. They just want to inspire young kids. And if they can do what they love in basketball, then why not just try and put basketball in other kids' hands? In young kids' hands today, and see if, see if they can get stuck into you know. And look, you're you're working with Mark Mulholland, um, another, in my opinion, genius. Yeah. Um, recently he got uh, his NBA. Was it what was it? His NBA, his FIBA uh, player engagement. Yeah. Like unreal. Like, yeah. but Mark is shady. Mark says nothing, and then like there's a social media post that he's you know got this award or this award or yeah he's just qualified as something else. I didn't even know who Mark was until I came up. To be honest, <laughs> he, does a, he does a great job, and he always says it of staying behind the scene. Yeah, you know? he doesn't yeah. want to be out there in front of everybody. He says that's Garrett's job. Yeah, Mark Mark is pulling strings behind that not many people know about, and in fairness. I don't want to speak on behalf of Garrett and Deirdre, but I know that they'd say the same, but it wouldn't run if it wasn't for Mark. No, well, I saw that first hand down in Dublin. Yeah. We walked that man, the errors that man put in. Yeah. All of you, like all the, all the crew, mm -hmm. put in some serious foxy, all like serious errors over the weekend. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And it was just, it was amazing to be, to be part of it, to be behind the scenes, to get to bring like my kids teams yeah. In and around it, my nephew, my stepdaughter in and around it was just it was incredible. Like yeah. she she the day you got the MVP, I called mm -hmm. her, I said, Guess who's after winning the MVP? And she was like, Who? <laughs> I said, Connor. And she was like, He signed my ball. This is her <laughs> big thing that she has your signature on her ball from oh, that ball. Yeah. You know what I mean? She was like, Oh my god. And I was like, Well, there you go. Do you have an MVP signature on your ball? <laughs> but like that, she's like, Is that on next year? Because if it is, I'm taking the week off school. I was like, that's between you and your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get involved in that. Well, I'm not getting involved in this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was just, it was an incredible, incredible weekend of basketball. Um, and the work that they do within the foundation of Sports Change Life is just incredible. Yeah, Basketball has been very good to me. I know it's been very good to you. And mm -hmm. to be able to give back even, even a, a tenth of what we've gotten from basketball yeah. and see, see a kid smile because you've taken time out of your day yeah like that's that's everything when it comes to the sports changes life foundation yeah that's what it's all about it's inspiring the next generation you know and that's literally that's 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 their motto per se i don't know if it actually is but that's what they that's their aim and their yeah. goal you know and they're and doing a fantastic job goal, what better goal what better goal could you have you know oh that's it if you like if it's not even i know gareth would, would probably agree it's not about Produce the next superstar. Oh no, not at all. Or it's inspiring the next kid to to be better in in, in their everyday life. Hundred percent. You know. Yeah. And like I had Noah Thomason on from Niagara, and I had Zaria um on from Marist or from yeah. Water, Water, yeah. And they spoke about their time in the community during their time in Ireland, and they were inspired. Yeah. So for for a kid to go back to the states, haven't been inspired by our kids here. It's just an incredible thing. Yeah. And those yeah. those players over, like, yeah, obviously some of them are not the biggest schools and they wouldn't have, I wouldn't say that many kids like running up to them all the time. But they're over here and they're like superstars, celebrities. So people think that they're LeBron, LeBron James could walk in and they treat them the exact same. <laughs> you know, sign this, sign that, take my picture, or will you take a selfie? You know, it's, I mean, as much as it is, it is all about the kids, those players got a great experience too. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And when, and when I spoke to them, that was the one thing they said. And yeah, Coach yeah. Paulus as well, the Niagara coach, he said the same thing. He was just like, oh my God, like to, to be treated at that level, yeah. of superstar them. Yeah. He said for these kids, it's, it's, that's going to stay with them forever. 100%. You know, even if they never play basketball after this season. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're still going to have their, their trip to Ireland. Yeah. And, and you, yeah. You, you were lucky enough to go to the London games as well. Yeah, the London one was on a different scale as well. Obviously, there were some bigger teams. You had Princeton and Tucson coming home back to London, you know? Yeah. Uh, so that was a big deal. Um, and they ended up winning it, which made, which yeah, it, made it even and, better. <laughs> yeah, the cherry on top for everybody. They had the biggest fan. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. Um, and is there a movie movie coming out shortly about that? Yeah, I think so. I think Speed Motion did a movie. I'm not, yeah. I'm not 100% on it. Uh, Mark would be the boy to ask that. Absolutely. That's it. That's it if you can get Mark. I've been trying yeah. to get a podcast since day one. <laughs> As you said, he just he, he slides into the background. Yeah. <laughs> He's in hibernation mode. <laughs> <laughs> unreal. Unreal. Look, we'll get back to this. Five kicks. What's your go to shoe? Uh, probably the shoes that I'm wearing now. They're falling off my feet at the moment. <laughs> and, um, my dad's giving up to me mad. He's saying that uh, I need to get a new pair. But I I just actually I really love them. They're Kyrie Kyrie Sevens I'm wearing at the moment. Um and I've been wearing Kyrie's actually since college. We got to pick, like we got given like three or four options and Kyrie was like Kyrie's the Browns, Kobe's. And I always picked the Kyrie's, you know. So Where is he gonna go next year? Where's who, who Kyrie? Where's he gonna go? I don't know. Shoes? I don't know. His suit that's why I'm gonna keep a lot and keep keeping on to them for as long as I can. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do if he goes if he goes somewhere else. You know? What, what did he wear his first game after losing his contract a pair of Skechers? Did and he? Still at, and still at 31 points. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely oh. sick. Yeah, sick. So. so look, you and four others going to a pickup game on the blacktop. Who are you taking? Mm. Ah, that's a tough one. Again, people are probably going to get hurt at this one. <laughs> um, I'd probably... I'd go with Dara. Um, I'd take Shane. I'd take Nate as well, our American this year. Yep. Solely, solely for his defensive ability. He can block some shots like I've never seen before. <laughs> um, and then my last one, who would I take? Uh, I'd go with Drummond. Yeah. I'd go with Drummond. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what a player. Yeah, G- gets another national cup now with it, with with the uh, Rebel Whalers. Like unreal, yeah. unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah, and so humble yeah. in it as well. I heard his interview afterwards. He was like, "Look, I didn't do anything out there today." Yeah, you know what I mean. He's pointing, he's pointing the finger to everyone else. It's just, it's yeah. typical drumming though. It's yeah, typical it drum. No, no, it's not me. It's yeah, it's, it's the rest of the team. Yeah, he'd be first to praise everybody else in fairness. Yeah. To him. Such a humble guy. Such a humble yeah. guy. Right, so top five musical artists of all time. Oh, um, Michael Jackson. He's definitely there. Uh, I'll probably go Jay Z. Um, Whitney Houston is in there. I just watched her. Just you watched, watched the movie? movie yeah, I watched that movie there. The Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Whitney is definitely in there. Um, I'll throw some country in there. I'll go Luke Combs. You ever hear him? You've lost me. Nah. No, of course I've heard him. <laughs> oh, you have. Luke Combs. <laughs> and the last one, I got Drake as well. I like Drake. Boy, so it's a big mix. That There's Whitney boy, 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 is unreal. Oh, unreal. I, I'm, I'm all right saying that on, on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Go watch it. It's well worth it. It's, yeah. Like, yeah. it's an emotional yeah. roller coaster. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. Great movie, though. Great movie. So you're the DJ. What three songs are we warming up to? Uh, I'm actually a sucker for some Taylor Swift. Oh, Jesus Christ. I know. Oh, Josh last week telling me Miley Cyrus. Yeah. Yeah, she has some good songs, too. She's blowing <laughs> her new one. She came out new up with some Taylor Swift. I throw it on there. You belong with me. Um, I'll go. 
uh, hate, hate it or love it by 50 cent and whatever you like by ti all available on the podcast warm-up playlist on spotify <laughs> after this episode <laughs> <laughs> What advice would you give to 16-year-old Conor O'Sullivan? Um, the cream always raises to the top. So, bite your time. Keep the head down. You'll be all right. Great advice. Great advice. Yeah. Uh, top four NBA players of all time. Who's on your Mount Rushmore? Oh, wow. I, I'm going to go to top, the top three, I think. MJ, Kobe, LeBron. And then number four, number four is a tough one. I'll probably go with Shaq or Kareem. Throw them in there. Can't argue with any of them. Yeah. So, dead or alive, five dinner guests who's sitting around the table for dinner tonight. Friends, family, mm. or famous choice is yours. I answered this question before. <laughs> and my mom actually texted me after she listened to it. I answered it on the Side Line Live podcast, I think. Yeah. And my man texted me. Shout out to Orla, by the way, doing a great yeah, job. She is doing a great job. <laughs> great store. And my man texted me straight away and said, you can leave one of them at home. I, I want to come. <laughs> so my man can come this time. Uh, I'll bring... Uh, this, is, this is tough. I, I'll bring Luke Combs because I actually really like him. I think he'd be interesting. Uh, uh, MJ, some Will Farrell, and one last one. Who am I bringing? I'll throw Conor McGregor in there too. Really? Yeah. Just cause. Just cause. Okay. Just cause. That's a look. It's a good enough reason. So, are we ordering out, or are you cooking? No, I'm not cooking. <laughs> I, I can cook, but I'm not, I'm not cooking if I'm with all them. <laughs> I can pay. <laughs> I'll do you a good deal. Well, yeah, yeah, you can, I'll come to you. We come to first. <laughs> I'll do you a good deal. Yeah, no problem. Once I can hang around the room, no problem. I'll do whatever yeah. you want. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Connor, it's been a pleasure. Um, we're at our last question, believe it or not. Um, look, first and foremost, Getting to hang out with you and, and meet you and, and, and deal with you for that weekend was incredible. Um, you're such a humble guy. Really good head in your shoulders for such such a young'un. You know what I mean? You're, you're an old soul. Clearly, you know, your background in basketball, but your background, your parents have done an amazing job bringing you up. Thanks very much. I, you know, I, yeah, you just had so much time for everybody over that weekend. Um, and as I said, to see you lift the MVP, I, like, I was emotional watching it. Which is ridiculous because like I'd only met you like once or twice <laughs> before then, but I was like, yes, straight away. I was straight on the Instagram mess- messaging you going, yeah. You know, I was like, this is amazing. But yeah, look, it's been a pleasure having you on. I really hope we get to work with each other in the future, be it through mm-hmm. basketball or through the sports changes life or whatever. But you know, you're a good guy to be around. Um, I enjoyed your company immensely over that week uh, of mm-hmm. basketball in Dublin. Um, best of luck with the rest of the season. Thank Hopefully, you. uh, you'll get the W when it comes to the league as well, or the top fours and a nice promotion. Yeah, and you stay up in UJ for next year. That's the next goal, or back to Neptune and to you know, I don't know. with JB. I'm not saying, I'm not saying anything, yes, <laughs> I'm not saying anything. It's all right. I like just throwing things out there for people to mess with. You know, <laughs> is he going? Is he really moving? Like, oh, I don't know. I just, I'm just throwing it out there, you know what I mean? That's my job, <laughs> yeah. So, look, last question. Who would you like to see on the podcast? The only thing is you have to try and help me get them on. Um, One person, I, I, I haven't talked about him an awful lot, actually, throughout the, throughout the interview or the podcast, but he's been really influential on me and my brother, but it's one of my dad's best friends, Carl Butler. Um, Don't know, you, you'd obviously know that name from back in the day, he played at Declan's. He's over, yep. he's over in Sweden now at the moment, but great character, and I think he'd actually be a great listen. Yeah, definitely have a look at him. What's the story you're getting your own man on? You get him on too. Get him on together. That'd be a laugh. Oh, man, yeah. That'd be some laugh. Jeez, the amount of stories that they'd have that for you. 
That's what I like. I want, I want, I want to pick your dad's brain about the glory days in Cork. Yeah. And it's yeah, not even about basketball, it's all the stuff that went on yeah. around. Exactly. You know what I mean? They're, like, they're the stories that you really want to hear. Yeah. You get a mind. You get a mind out of water. I'll help you get the tool of mine. Lovely. Lovely. Connor, it's been a pleasure. You enjoy the rest of your day. What's the plan for the rest too. of the evening? Training later. Training at uh, 8 o'clock. So I'll go up and lift before training. and then. Who have you got this weekend? Port Leash away. Oh, that's going to be a tough one. Yeah, we we beat them there on Sunday, so we play them back to back. Play them Sunday, just this, this Sunday past, and then we play them on Saturday. This, so, it'll be a tough Another, one. Uh, no, no cup hangover, no. Nah, nah. There's no such thing as a cup hangover. We we just keep rolling. Love it, just love it. That's what, that's what I love to hear. I look, look, I'm looking forward to watching the rest of the season. Um, yeah, and look, we'll see where it takes us. Connor, it's been an absolute pleasure. I will talk to you soon. Cheers, Ayla. Thanks, Cheers, man. man. See you later.